Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to be watching an episode of ER where they diagnose a patient with prostate cancer and schedule him for a radical prostatectomy. I'll be talking a little bit about the diagnosis, about what to expect after surgery, and a little bit about depression and anxiety associated with the diagnosis. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, if you're new here, I'm Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Welcome to my channel. We talk all about things urology. While you're watching this episode, please be sure to comment below about things you've heard about prostate cancer, and maybe I can answer some of those questions for you. Hello, Mr. Gardner. I have the results of your MRI. Great. So, how's it look? Good news. It appears the cancer hasn't spread beyond the capsule. Great. So, uh... Does this mean I can hold on to my prostate? Well, I'm afraid not. Dr. Romano does want to continue with the radical prostatectomy tomorrow morning as scheduled. All right, so just to explain a little bit about testing before prostate cancer surgery. An MRI is not something that everybody necessarily gets before prostate cancer surgery. When you are diagnosed with prostate cancer, first of all, I talk a little bit about prostate cancer screening in my video, reacting to the try guys getting a prostate exam. That's a good one, so make sure you check it out. And just to briefly review, prostate cancer screening occurs when you have a digital rectal exam or a rectal exam and a serum PSA or prostate specific antigen that tells us your risk of having prostate cancer. If that risk is high, you then go on to get a transrectal ultrasound and prostate biopsy. These days, actually in the last 10 years or so, we've been doing MRI fusion guided biopsies, which is a newer technology that has been shown to identify more clinically significant prostate cancers compared to the standard transrectal ultrasound biopsy. So that is one indication where you would get an MRI. The second indication would be if you, after all of those three tests, the blood test, the rectal examination, and the biopsy, fell into an intermediate or high risk category, in which case you would undergo some sort of abdominal imaging, either a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis or an MRI, as well as a bone scan to see if your prostate cancer has spread outside of your prostate. Typically, this wouldn't be happening the day before you're scheduled for surgery, and it wouldn't be happening in the hospital setting it would be happening in a clinic visit when you see your doctor but with the surgery you stand an excellent chance of beating the cancer it really is very good news is, uh, he doesn't look so convinced is dr romano around he's in surgery is it something i can help you with well he had mentioned uh, that the operation could result in my losing sexual function i think that's still the case well, we'll try our best to do a nerve sparing procedure, but there is that possibility, yes. How strong a possibility? Well, according to Dr. Romano's notes, as high as 75 to 80%. All right, so prostate cancer surgery or radical prostatectomy is associated with some risks of erectile dysfunction and urinary incontinence. Those are the two big risks that we talk about that can affect quality of life after surgery. The risk of erectile dysfunction happens because the nerves that create erections run alongside the prostate. And if we can do what she described as a nerve sparing procedure where we can keep those nerves, then the risk of erectile dysfunction is much less. And that can depend on how aggressive your cancer is. So if it is involving the capsule or it is spread beyond the prostate, then we would have to take those nerves to get complete cancer control, which would would result in erectile dysfunction. In the case that we're able to spare the nerves, the risk of erectile dysfunction is much lower. So the risk that I often quote people is 15 to 50 percent. Each person is individually discussed based on the amount of cancer that you see on the MRI as well as based on the biopsy results. Urinary incontinence, the other big quality of life factor can occur in up to 10 to 15 percent of patients after prostate removal and that is leakage that occurs when you cough sneeze lift heavy things both of these things can take some time to recover so they can take anywhere between 12 to 18 months to get full recovery of both your erections and your continence has dr romano discussed your options about having children in the future no well, you might want to consider paying a visit to a sperm bank. That way, if there is a loss of function, you'll still be able to father children through alternative means. 
Okay, so to clarify on that point, if you are having a radical prostatectomy, what that entails is removing the prostate, the seminal vesicles, and those seminal vesicles are attached to the vas deferens. The vas deferens is the tubing that connects the testicles that hold the sperm and transfer it to the ejaculatory duct so that it comes out of the body. If you cut the vas deferens, which is what's done in a vasectomy, I actually talk about vasectomies in the reaction to Link and Rhett getting a vasectomy, so make sure you check that out. But if you cut the vas deferens, then you will no longer be able to have your sperm go out the ejaculatory duct. So you will no longer be able to have children. That is a known with radical prostatectomy. And so yes, going to a sperm bank is very reasonable. However, for most people who have prostate cancer, they are older and not looking to father children. However, in young men, certainly that is a discussion you need to have. Coming through. Okay, let's get him in the trauma one. Miss Gardner. Miss Gardner, how are you? I just feel tired. I can't breathe. Is, it, is this your patient? Yep, and he's hyperventilating like crazy. Okay, hook him up to a 12 lead EKG and a Thanks, Captain Obvious. Let's get a mask on him. We need to get your breathing under control. So concentrate on the breath. Okay. Let the breath out slowly. What? Slowly. Monitor's up. All right. Yep. Pulse is up to 99. That's a good sign. You're going to be fine. Breathe in on the count of five. One, two. Oh, this coaching you're breathing. David, you're David Gardner, right? The, the trumpet soloist? I saw your guest performance with the Chicago Symphony. He's oh, only having sorry, respiratory distress. Let's have a conversation with him. Oh. Breathe out. I just loved your featured performance in Muller 2. It, it, it gave me shivers. Slowly. Uh, where do you go next? <laughs> in Boston. Breathe ah, in. Ah, DSO. Yes. I got you 12 minutes. Breathe out. David, your heart looks just fine. That was quick. Okay, we'll run a few tests just to make sure, but I think that you are just having an anxiety attack. Are you a little nervous about playing Frozoa? Breathe oh. in. All right, so a little bit of comedy there. If you come in with chest pain, yes, you will get oxygen, you will get your vitals taken, you will get an EKG done to make sure that you're not having a heart attack, and you will get blood drawn called troponins to make sure that your enzymes in your heart are not elevated that would make it concerning for a heart attack. You wouldn't be able to rule it out completely in two seconds. Yes, the EKG was probably normal in this guy. So anxiety in patients with prostate cancer is actually very common. So if you look at the data, there was a study done that was a meta-analysis of 27 different studies looking at 5,000 patients. And what they found was the prevalence of anxiety and depression in patients who were diagnosed with prostate cancer was rather high. They found the prevalence of depression to be around 17% and the prevalence of anxiety to be 27%. So that's somewhere in one in five men will have depression and more than one in four men will have anxiety once they get a diagnosis of prostate cancer. That's a lot. Mr. Gardner, your labs look stunning. We should probably wait on the cardiac enzymes before letting you go. Well, at this rate, I might as well check in for the night, huh? Well, it would certainly save you to drive in for surgery tomorrow. No. No, the less time I spend here, the better. No offense. <laughs> None taken. <laughs> so, how are you feeling? Oh, like an idiot. I thought I was having this big heart attack. Turns out I'm just a nervous wreck. You know, if you wanted to, you could postpone surgery. No, I have to be recovered by January 15th. I'm doing a televised special with the Boston Dr. Symphony. Dr. Oh, I'll have to mark my calendar. So I actually find this happening a lot in patients who are trying to schedule their surgery so they can make a certain date. You do need to take into consideration the recovery period. For anyone undergoing major abdominal surgery, I tell patients about four to six weeks before you are going to be able to do your normal activities. And in some cases, depending on the type of surgery, it could be longer. So as I mentioned, anxiety is very common in men with the diagnosis of prostate cancer. Another study actually looked at surgical outcomes of patients who had 
anxiety and depression. So what they did is they took a baseline questionnaire that looked at anxiety and depression. And what they found was that patients who had prostate cancer and depression and anxiety had worse outcomes, which included longer length of stay in the hospital, higher complication rates, and higher rates of urinary incontinence postoperatively. They didn't actually find a difference in erectile dysfunction postoperatively, but they did find that people with higher rates of depression and anxiety had to use more assisted means to have erections, so either using medications or injections to get erections. Why does this happen? Well, there's actually some theories that having depression or anxiety can change the neurochemical makeup of your brain so that your brain can release different kinds of chemicals that changes your body's response and can also change your immune response. So that can make it harder for you to recover from surgery. So what this study recommends and what I would recommend is that if you or your family member has a diagnosis of prostate cancer and you're having some anxiety, Go get it looked at. Get some professional help to treat that anxiety because it may actually mean that you'll have better outcomes from surgery. So which section of the orchestra are you going out with now? <sighs> no, I've been unattached since I started the tour six months now. Mm, that's a long time to be on the road. Yeah, it sure is. Swarms of groupies in every city. <laughs> <laughs> well, classical soloist doesn't quite lead the life of a rolling stone. <laughs> if I'd known I was going to lose my prostate, I would make more of an effort, believe me. Are you still anxious about the surgery tomorrow? Obviously. I was never all that anxious about the surgery, per se. It was more that... Good. You really want to know? Yes. Well, I, I went up to your clinic to deposit my DNA. And of course, they directed me to the cubicle where they'd set out the, the specimen jar and the men's magazine. And I, and I just kept thinking, well, this is it. This is my, my last sexual experience. And I, well, you know, the rest. <laughs> Must be the first time in history that somebody's had performance anxiety while by himself. David, would you like to grab a bite to eat somewhere? Yes, Elizabeth, I like that very much. All right, well, I think that's really sad that he felt that this might be his last sexual experience, but of course that doctor quoted him 75% chance of erectile dysfunction, so certainly that would give him reason to think that way, but that's not the case for everyone undergoing prostate cancer. I would say that with assistance, either with medications or other adjunctive therapies, somewhere between 85 to 90% of people can obtain erections after prostate cancer therapy. Of course, there are exceptions to that rule, but it doesn't mean that you will definitely have your last sexual experience before you have your surgery. I hope that this gave you some information about prostate cancer, about the diagnosis and treatment, as well as post-operative care for prostate cancer. So let me give you three main takeaways from today's watching ER. Number one, prostate cancer is a diagnosis that's found through a biopsy a transrectal ultrasound and biopsy, sometimes with an MRI at the same time. That taken with your blood test results of your prostate-specific antigen and your digital rectal examination puts you into a risk category from which your treatment is decided based on that risk category. Of course, in a discussion with you and your doctor. The risk of erectile dysfunction after surgery is variable and can improve up to 18 months after surgery. So it does take some time for you to obtain erections again after surgery. Number three, anxiety and depression are very common in prostate cancer patients. So if you or your family have been diagnosed with prostate cancer, please, if you're feeling any symptoms of anxiety or depression, seek some professional help because it may overall give you better outcomes from surgery or treatment for prostate cancer. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to check out all my other Urologist Reacts videos over here. And if you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. I try to make videos every Monday. Thank you so much. And always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.